the birth of virtual, the decline of reality. Communication. Communication is one of the most important key aspects of our society. We are social creatures, and oftentimes, we, our lives center around our ability to communicate with one another. Now, some, some forms of communication include verbal, physical, etc., and they are all equally important. Now, this importance of communication has led us to strive to innovate our means of communication. This includes things such as languages, the development of telegrams, devices such as the fax machine, and all the way leading up to the cell phone. Now, these are just a few examples, but they all show our constant development of our ways of communicating. Technology is getting better every day. And that, in part, is due to our exposure to fictional media. One example of this fictional media is the 1960s show Star Trek. Star Trek shows things and devices that are futuristic looking, and they were futuristic definitely for their time, as these things included things such as cell phones, video calls, and virtual reality headsets, which I will be showing you right now. Energize. Kirk to Enterprise. Red alert. What is that? Cessus 3 has been destroyed. Communication through technology has always been an aspiration for the human race. Today, we see things such as video calls, FaceTime, and phone calls, all of which were shown in the 1960s Star Trek show. Now, technological communication is the future, and the future of technology is the inclusion of one form, virtual reality. Now, virtual reality is shown to be the first real virtual interaction with fake objects that we can see today. Now, virtual reality isn't just present today, it actually started back in the 1960s around where, when Star Trek was airing. In the 1960s, the Telesphere Mask was the first virtual reality headset to be invented. This virtual reality headset had stereoscopic 3D and stereo sound to display a virtual image for the user. Today, we see virtual reality headsets as very marketable. In 2013, the first marketable headset came out known as the Oculus. Ten years from then, which is present day, we see that in the United States, 65.9 million people have virtual reality headsets. That is 15% of the entire United States population. The main selling point of these virtual reality headsets are, is the immersive interaction that we can get from them. Now one of these forms of immersive interaction we see is in the form of virtual reality uh, classroom discussions, lecture halls, stuff like that, classrooms, things that were developed in the time of COVID-19 where we couldn't be in person to have class. We see several examples of classroom discussions and lectures being demonstrated through virtual reality in this video I'm about to show you. People if you've been on one of these calls, you've probably experienced people talking over each other, and then there's this. If someone's dog comes into it, or someone stops paying attention, then you might miss what someone is saying. Uh, he got Ryan one. Otten's online business class in virtual reality, or VR, eliminates the distractions of a video conference call. 
I can't see my phone, I can't see an email pop up, so I'm fully focused on a, a great learning environment. Pagoni VR, through its project Chimera, created the VR experience with Otten's class at Temple University. The students appear as avatars in the virtual classroom, and the teacher shows up as either an avatar or real video that's live or recorded. This now this also includes social simulators in virtual reality. The social interaction in, social, in virtual reality doesn't only deal with learning experiences, it also deals with just social interaction with one another. Now one of these social simulators is VR chat. And in VR chat, you can mask yourself. Now what is masking? Masking is hiding yourself behind an avatar. You, you pick an avatar and you choose that to represent yourself to other people. Now this could be anything you can think of, even inappropriate things, which is comes in as the next big problem for virtual reality. The future seems to be the metaverse, interacting with people through the virtual world. And if this virtual world is filled with masked people, then that issues a bigger problem at stake. Having people masked behind avatars leads to people not showing who their true selves are. This is related to incidents such as catfishing and people grooming minors into thinking that they are somebody else. We also see explicit pictures being shown in these social simulators as they are the most prominent forms of harassment in virtual reality. Now the problem is, we can't go after these people because we don't know who they are. They are masking behind themselves. This is what cyberbullies do. Cyberbullying is also a big proponent of social simulators because of their ability to mask. Cyberbullies feel comfort behind a cell phone that they can bully somebody else because they can, they can see no repercussions for it. That's why there is a big problem with social simulators. Diamonds the fight Your words I see can in my chest What are you thinking? may all be virtual technology. We may not have 
this real environment to look at all the time. It's just a matter of keeping what's most important to us and what makes us human. Stay human and don't become a robot. Thank you. Here are my references.